Hey everybody, welcome to Monday Live with the Creativity Cave. I'm so excited to see you. Let me just get my Stampin' Lips on. I hope everybody had a great weekend. It was, it was alarmingly cold here on Saturday. Like, um, I would say slap you across the face, but I think my husband said it best when he said it was kick you in the crotch cold. <laughs> um, we decided it was super windy here. And, um, so the wind chill was below zero and we decided not to walk the puppies because <laughs> we've really become pathetic in our spoiled 40 degree weather history we've had a few days last week. So anyway, today it's like... 48 degrees. It's gorgeous out. The sun is still shining. It's five o'clock and the sun is still out and it's not even like close to being down. So that is just wonderful. I love when the days get longer. It just makes me so happy. It brings real joy to my life. <laughs> so I hope that you had a great weekend. We, um, do we do, what did we do? I don't know. What did we do? I feel like there was something. It seems so long ago, actually. I guess, well, um, my husband hasn't been feeling very well. And so I think we just, it was a low-key weekend. I'm like, literally, it was like yesterday, but I just don't even remember. So anyway, <laughs> um, yesterday was the weekend, right? But yesterday we went on a walk and that was good. Um, it just has been, uh, it's been kind of up and down with the weather. It's lovely today. And I think I saw it's supposed to be even warmer here. So I love that. It does not feel like end of February weather and, um, or mid February, whatever, but it's, it's also for sure going to be the case where it's going to come back. Like winter's coming back for us. There's just no way around it. <laughs> It's probably going to come back in a terrible time. So anyway, um, so I had, um, I have some really great projects. Gosh, I feel like my voice sounds funny. You know, okay, so I have to ask you this, and I know I'm probably going to regret this a little bit. Whenever you ask the internet for medical advice, it never goes well. But um we were all sick with COVID at Christmas and then we got better. And then, um, and then I was sick like, Oh, a couple weeks ago I got sick again and, and I've gotten better, but I feel like I have, I don't know. I feel like, I wonder if I have a sinus infection. How do you know if you have a sinus infection? Cause my nose, I still have congestion a little bit. And then, um, I feel like I have a sinus headache. Like I feel it here. Do you see, it? see how I'm like pushing on my face? And I feel it here. And I had a massage um, last week and my massage lady told me that um, I should rub up here. And she goes, yeah, I can see there's like fluid up here. And I'm like, oh, great. So she was telling me to do this. I keep doing this, but this doesn't seem to fix it. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure if, um, I don't know, like, yeah. Huh. Who has time to go to the doctor? <laughs> it does sound like a sinus infection. I don't want to deal with that, but I guess, will it go away on its own or do I need medication? Is it, con is it, con um, contagious? I didn't think sinus infections were really contagious. Yes. Th there's pain under my eyes. <laughs> See my doctor online. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's not super miserable. It's just annoying. I'm sick of being sick, but I, I don't really feel super sick. I don't know. Okay. It's not contagious. That's what I thought. <sighs> Ooh, prednisone and antibiotic. Okay. 
when we get sinus infections, I do steam tents, hot water in a bowl, and then cover your head with a towel and let the steam clear it. Oh, that's a good one. Um, you know what that reminds me of? <laughs> this is really old, but um, the, uh, the um, what is the movie? Crocodile Dundee when the guy is snorting cocaine and Crocodile Dundee sticks it in a pot of hot water. <laughs> puts the towel over his head and says to breathe it in. <laughs> Obviously, that's different here. <laughs> we'll just go with the hot water. That sounds good. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm giggle. Do I have a nasal irrigation bottle? Is that where you squeeze water up your nose? No, I do not. So, hmm, uh, I do not have that, but I guess I don't really want to um, squirt stuff up my nose because my brain already hurts. <laughs> I feel if I do that, it's going to hurt more. Um, sorry, I'm just reading all these comments. <laughs> Saline mist works. Well, maybe I'm going to have to try that. I don't know. It'll make your brain feel so much better. <laughs> That's good because my brain hurts right now, but not like, I don't know, just in the annoying, can it go away way. Anyway, I thought if I wore this bright, happy peach sweatshirt or sweat or shirt, whatever this is, it's a corduroy shirt. Um, Carl came down and gave me a hug earlier and he goes, quarter is my jam, baby. <laughs> and I laughed, but, um, this is funny. So I bought this shirt like a year ago and I couldn't wear it last winter because my arms were super tight in it. Like, like, you know, like, like super tight and I didn't feel comfortable. Like, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't work, couldn't move, but now I can, <laughs> Except now I, um, I don't know if I like the way it fits because now it's like too big. I know these problems that I have, but anyway, I thought if I wore this bright, happy shirt that it would make me feel better and I think it's working. I hope so. Anyway, um, let's see. There were a couple of, um, oh, Vicks. Yeah, that's good. A neti pot and salty water, even when you're not sick. <laughs> um, I there's I'll have to try it. I'll let you know. But gosh, I don't really feel like squirting stuff up my nose. I am laughing so hard because I read um, this post a friend of mine from high school posted on Facebook. This was like around Christmas when we were all sick, and it was something about I don't know if she used Afrin or what she used a nasal spray and she said she didn't see that it was, um, I believe she called it hell's furnace flavor. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but, um, she, she squirted in her nose and she goes, and it went straight to my brain. I've never felt anything like that before. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny, but I believe she called it hell's furnace flavor. <laughs> I don't know what it was, um, but I kind of made a mental note of not really wanting to do that after I read what she wrote. And there's no, I'll have to go back and see like if she posted anything else about it to see if like it worked or not. So anyway, that was just kind of funny. <laughs> I just remembered that. <sighs> so, um, but I will thank you for all the advice. Uh, I appreciate it. I knew you, I knew you guys would not let me down. There was one, something back here. Um, okay. Patricia needed antibiotics. Yeah, I kind of figure out, figured that might have been what it was. Um, I, my voice just seems to be going and I haven't even talked that much cause I've been work, working by myself. I do not like putting anything up my nose. <laughs> it's a good rule of thumb, right? <laughs> oh boy. So 
Um, anyway, what else was I going to tell you? I felt like I had something kind of interesting to tell you, but maybe not. Huh. So, well, a few announcements. Um, first off, our la stamp, lavender, blah, blah. hold on, let me get my sheet because I can't, apparently I've lost some of my brain power too. Our Lavender Dreams Stamping Escape is happening this weekend, so I'm super excited about that. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we've got such awesome content planned. In fact, we were just kind of going through all the projects um, last week and and we were all like, oh my gosh, this is going to be pretty awesome. <laughs> so we're really excited about this event. You, are, you can still join. I have a couple of boxes left. Um, or you can join us for the online only version and it's going to be just such a wonderful event. We've got lots of fun things planned, including the stamping games, which are just like the Olympic games only with stamping. <laughs> um, but they're going to be really fun. Okay, maybe they're not just like the Olympic games, but they're close. You don't have to be an Olympic level stamper to participate. It's it's the kind, you know, that I keep seeing these posts where they're like, throw a normal guy in and see how they do. <laughs> That's more of what we're like. <laughs> but we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, and then we have, uh, we have, we just, we have, we have really great projects planned. So I'm looking forward to that. If you want to get um, registered, just drop me a line. There might be a link in the description of this video, but if there isn't, um, just drop me a line and I will give you the registration. Of course, um, Jan says, it would be fun, except I didn't get the unavailable DSP. The DSP is available, and Jen's. I'm not sure what that means, Jan. Jess, I think you're having a little issue. Gems. Oh, um, the gems were available until just very recently. Um... Yeah, so th they sh they'll be back, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and then the dyes are going to be back in like 10 days, so they'll be back real soon. Anyway, um, so if you'd like to get registered, please drop me a line. I would love to have you join the fun. Like I said, I've got a couple boxes left. I'd love to send them to a happy home. Now, whether you join us through the event live or you come um, when it works for you, everything is recorded. We are doing three live sessions over the weekend, but um, you, like I said, everything is um, everything is uh, recorded, so you can um, you can get everything whenever you're ready for it. It's that's no big deal. Um, Let's see. I'm actually. I am gonna flip my camera because I also have my little my little visual aids. <laughs> Someone said I should come to Australia and that would fix my sinuses. I think that that would hurt before it felt better. Just saying. But Australia is 100% on my bucket list for sure. Let me get my water out of the way. I've been drinking like my body weight in water, which of course is great because all I do is pee. But anyway. In fact, I uh, snuck, I snuck a quick potty stop before I um, came on live because I was worried I wouldn't make it through the end of my video. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I thought you guys would laugh. Also, I was thinking um, because I am a mom, I use the word potty. I don't use the word bathroom because that's what you say to a kid. Do you need to go potty? I say that to my dogs. Um, I think that's just going to be how I say it from now on. <laughs> it's kind of like when you hold something and you rock, like that's what moms do. Hold, rock and bounce. <laughs> um, whether it's a baby or a dog or a ball or laundry, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, so again, Lavender Dreams is coming up. Um, celebration is going for just another like not quite two weeks 
and oh my goodness, friends, it's just the best. Celebration's the best time of year. We are going to be working with a celebration stamp set for our projects today. And of course, the best deal that we offer for during celebration is the join offer, which allows you to purchase um, a starter kit where you can pick $125 in items for just $99 plus tax. The shipping's free. And then you can choose either the Glass Mat Studio, which I'm going to whip up here on my desk in just a second, or you can also choose um, $30. So you can pick whichever one you want. The Glass Mat Studio is valued at like 60 something dollars, and or you could pick $30 if you don't want the Glass Mat. Um, I have been l absolutely loving mine. I use it all basically whenever I'm stamping. Um, the only reason I take it off my desk is to take pictures of projects because my background is better for that um, on my desk here, but it's just the best deal. So I highly encourage you to take advantage of it. Of course, when you join Stampin' Up, one of the perks at, for being on my team is you get access to our Stamp Happy Academy um, once you place your first order as a demonstrator. And this is a really awesome place where we house um, all kinds of things, including um, class PDFs and the PDF for today's projects will be posted there. So lots of opportunity to take advantage of some incredible inspiration. We also have a live only option that you can participate in or um, a premium subscription, which includes all the classes and all the lives. So lots of really cool stuff. We do three lives a month, which are geared towards helping you stamp more efficiently um, we give you lots of color combination suggestions, card layouts. So when you sit down to stamp, you can really make good use of that time and not just sit and try to figure out what to do with it. You know what I mean? So this month, our online class is the Trusty Tools Fun Fold online class. And these projects are so awesome, you guys. I really love them. And there's really great fun folds for each project um, included and tons of inspiration for both the bundle and the designer series paper, which is just fantastic. So I think you're going to really love this. Um, also, my upcoming Sunshine and Creativity Delivered box is going to feature cards for sympathy and thinking of you. That is what our March box is going to be. The projects are absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh, I love them so much. Also, my February box um, for my current subscribers is going out this week. So you've got some happy, happy mail coming your way. And the projects for this month are pretty awesome as well. Um, okay. Don't forget that if you place an order for $35 or more, you'll get a card kit with all of the pre-cut cardstock from today's projects along with the PDF. If you spend $50, you'll also get the All-Star Video Class Bundle for this month, which happens to be the Perennial Lavender. Sweet. And if you uh, spend $75 or more, you're going to get an embellishment with your kit. So please make sure and use my host code. And um, this is available um, for the next two weeks. So the last day is March... Third, sorry, I had to sneak a peek at my calendar. March third is the last day to to order um, this week's kit, so it's actually a two week kit. Okay, so I am going to start off with some more cards from my mailbox that arrived since we last met. So I got this adorable thank you card in the mail um, from Noreen, who's just so sweet. She won a prize patrol in our um, mystery stamping. And so she sent me this beautiful thank you card. So thank you so much, Noreen. I love it. I also received this cute card. This was, I think this came with, yes, this is from Priscilla. Priscilla sent this with her card swap from our um, kickoff swap group. We had a kickoff swap for um, the new catalog kickoff party. And those swap cards actually are headed out to you this week if you participated. If you if you also haven't voted, voting closes tonight. So make sure you vote for the swap card contest. This is all for the kickoff event. So if you're not in that, just ignore. <laughs> I got this super cute card. Isn't this so adorable from Valentine's? Um, 
from Wendy, who I just love this. So thank you so much, Wendy. Another cutie patootie with that B. This one is from Sherry. And isn't this just so sweet? Um, I love how she stamped on the circle punches for the inside of the card. I think that's super cute. And then this was like over the top to protect the card. How, how fun is that? I usually just put a plain piece of cardstock, but she stamped on it. And I think that's just brilliant. Another cutie patootie with that B. And this one is from Becky, who's um, also congratulating me for my 25th anniversary. So that was really sweet of you, Becky. Thank you so much. And then one more thank you card. Oh, I love this card layout. Such a fun one. This is from Jo. And this came with her um, swap card. So thank you for, for that, Jo. I appreciate it. So there you have my mailbox. Um goodies that came this past week I just am so grateful anytime I get a card in the mail so thank you so much if you sent one now this week our cards are going to feature the detailed dogwood this is a celebration choice at the hundred dollar level and it is actually one of my very favorite sets I have loved working with this one and I hope you're going to love it as well so I'm going to start with a simple card and then we're going to kind of build and get more complicated as we go. So um, my first card is real, real simple. And you could do this with the image I'm going to use or I'm going to use this image, but you could also do it with this um, floral image. You might need to adjust some things size wise because it's a little bigger, but you could you could for sure use that. Now, one of the things I love about this stamp set is this image and this image coordinate with punches that we have. So this coordinates with the pedal 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 builder punch, and then um, this one coordinates with this punch. And I don't even remember what this is called. I could look it up, but it go it coordinates with that Alphabest stamp set. So, also, I forgot I needed to throw my um, glass mat up here, so. There we go. Okay. So, anyway, this dogwood set is just the bomb. So, like I said, I'm going to start with a pool party cardstock card base and give that a good crease. Now, I took a piece of four by five and a quarter inch pool party and I embossed it, like, three-fourths of the way um, with this is the softly sophisticated embossing folder I've uh, shown this already and it's just so pretty and so I wanted to put something across here that um, would kind of break up the border between the embossing and the not embossed section of this so what I wanted to do is take some of this ribbon. Now this is our pool party celebration ribbon, um, but you can do this really with any, pretty much any ribbon. I'm just gonna take and twist it. Now this is, you know, I could put this just plain across here like that, but I thought it would be kind of fun to twist it. And I saw this somewhere, somebody had twisted the ribbon. And so I'm just gonna take and um, adhere this on my card like that. So I'll just kind of adhere the ends of it. So I'm gonna take my seal plus, cause this'll, you know, put down a nice sticky edge. Uh, you could also use like scotch tape, like literal scotch tape. Glue dots would work too, but I wanted something a little, let's just say sturdier <laughs> to hold this in place. Okay, so I'm just twisting it and then attaching it to the back. And how cool is that? So I've got this in there. Let's give it a quick trim. And it's just to ch kind of change up the, the look of the ribbon. Now this is not, it, it's, it's poofy, but it's not thick. You know, like it's not going to add crazy bulk to your card it, it's gonna lay real 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 nice and flat but I just thought this was kind of a fun way to take this wide ribbon and make it kind of skinny and different all right so I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to my card and <laughs> I just kind of undid it so I'm gonna twist it back up and stick it back down 
I inadvertently pulled it up when I was putting my adhesive on. So there we go. Okay, back in back in place. Um, and then I'm just going to put a little adhesive over the top of this if I can. Because I kind of like to smoosh my adhesive through my ribbon just to hold it in place. Like that little extra something, something. Just to make sure it's in place and nobody can mess with it. Okay, so there we go. Very pretty. Now, I die cut two die cuts. Uh, these are from the Everyday Details dies. Here are most of those dies. Uh, this piece going in the center. It's sitting by my machine back here. Um, and then there's also the circle someplace. Here we go. So these dies are really fun and they really are nice and versatile. I love the rectangles especially, but also these circles. They're very fun. Anyway, so I die, die cut the smallest of each. This one from um, Old Olive and then this one from Basic White Cardstock. So I'm going to use a really nice but kind of simple color combination, which is Berry Burst, Pool Party, and Old Olive. And then I'm going to throw into it a little smoky slate. You could use, uh, did I say smoky slate? I meant basic gray. I was thinking you could use smoky slate, but I want to use basic gray. It's a little darker. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. I think for all of my cards, I'm using one sentiment set, which is the Something Fancy. This came out um, last year around this time, and it's just a, a nice versatile stamp set. But I'm going to start with um let's see I'm going to use congratulations for my sentiment but then I'm going to take this little um I don't know if this is like a fleur de lis or not really it's just an ornamental kind of image and actually I don't want my basic gray I want my pool party okay so I'm going to start with pool party on one end right in the middle oh man could I have stamped that less in the middle Okay, well, that's not great, but it's okay. Then, um, well, actually, then the best thing to do is the other end, which I'm going to have be buried first. And then I'll show you, I have a one that I stamped ahead of time that's not so bad. <laughs> Since, I don't know, I think it's because of the camera. Okay, there's that. <laughs> Look at this nice even one <laughs> that I did ahead of time. So, whew, we'll get rid of that. Okay, so this is just the three little images stamped across here. So like I was kind of alluding to at the beginning, you could do this with the flower image um, as well. It, they might not fit on here quite the same way or else you would punch them out and stick them on this label. But either way, you can do it. And then I thought it just needed a little something, so I mounted it on this circle die, which just peeks out at the top and bottom to add a little extra color to this whole thing and then I'm going to pop that up over my ribbon on here because how pretty is that it just is gorgeous now this is a really great use for your um, what do you call these edge pieces of your dimensionals so I'm going to stick these kind of in the circle and then the ribbon will go right through the center like that and isn't that pretty it's so simple but it's really pretty okay so then I'm going to take that basic gray that I opened up let's get rid of this tidy up a little and um, I'm going to stamp at the bottom here congratulations like so. And isn't that gorgeous? It's so simple, but I really like the look of it. Now I'm going to embellish that with some pearls, just some plain old pearls. And I think they look so nice in the center of this little image right here. Now, of course, we're going to take and do a little stamping on the inside of our card. And here's where you can have a little bit of fun. Um, so I thought I would take and do just a little bit of stamping on here. Um, so I'm just going to take this polka dot image 
and stamp that at the bottom. And then there's this little hash. Well, it almost looks like a little strip of gauze or something. We'll just put a little bit of that on here. And um, then you can, I mean, you can kind of get creative and do different. No, I'm not going to do that. Where did my, this one go? Just quick clean that. And I'm just going to stamp this a couple times in my different... colors and just throw this on the inside as just kind of a fun little piece now this is you could line them up all nice to coordinate with this actually I don't really like this because I don't think it coordinates let's try that one more time I got a little crazier than I intended okay so there's our polka dots nice and simple let's see Ew, that's not clean. <laughs> this card is not going well all of a sudden. <laughs> but for you guys, it's going to be amazing. Sorry, I just had to get another piece to go in here. Okay, third time's a charm. Bear with me. We're going to get this right. Okay, we've got our polka dots. We're gonna take a clean stamp because everybody likes clean stamps. And we'll just do our little images in here, like so. There, that's better. And then maybe I'll just add a little bit of this kind of at the bottom just for fun. I think that's good enough. Okay, better than it was. Let's clean off my table because I know I got some ink on the background here I want to get rid of. I forgot to wet, wet my chamois before I came on. Okay, so third time was the charm. <laughs> Let's throw this inside our card. And here we go. So pretty. All right, but I just love this. I love the simplicity of it. Of course, you could do this in so many different color combinations, bold and bright or um, really uh, subtle, soft, kind of pastel correct colors, you know, whatever. So much fun. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what's happening with potholes <laughs> oh my goodness there's like a whole conversation about potholes or fried potatoes I don't know <laughs> but I love it there you go okay so there's our first card now our second card is a little bit fancier and uh extra pretty I like to think anyway in my personal opinion it's extra pretty um, so this card, this next card is going to be, uh, we're going to start with a mossy meadow card base. So we're going to use kind of a much different color scheme. This is more of a subtle, a soft and subtle color, color scheme than our last card was somewhat bright. Not, not like in your face bright, but brighter. Okay. And oh my God, look at this. Can't take me anywhere. At least I have a what I appear to clean myself off. It's like my backup chamois. <laughs> okay, so I've got a panel of Mossy Meadow, and then I'm going to combine that. Um, well, let's see. Oh, I forgot to emboss this. I'm going to take and emboss this. I'm going to use that same softly sophisticated embossing folder. Gosh, that's a pretty one. And my card just slid slid off where I stuck it. Okay, so I'm going to emboss this real quick. Give me one sec. Okay. So, 
this is really pretty. Um, I'm doing a uh, very vanilla by the way on this. And so I'm going to attach it to a petal pink card bait or layer. This piece is three and three quarters by five. And then we've got a three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Isn't that right? Oh no, four and seven eighths by. Okay, start it again. This is three and a half by four and three quarters, which makes this three and five eighths by four and seven eighths petal pink. Okay, and then I'm gonna adhere this to my card. So that gives us a nice kind of edge of our mossy meadow. So beautiful, beautiful start to this. Now we're gonna take that gorgeous dogwood image, um, kind of that main image in the stamp set and we're gonna stamp that down and then color it in. Okay, so let's see, this this piece goes on the inside. I wanna make sure I'm using the right piece of vanilla. Okay, so this is like my scrap of vanilla and I'm gonna take this and we'll stamp it in some black memento because we're going to color this in with Stampin' Blends. Now this is one of those really detailed images. It's not a distinctive, it's you know just a detailed image. Let's see, will it fit this way? Yeah. So I'm just going to stamp that down like so and then we're going to color this in and isn't that beautiful? It's just so um, detailed and pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna color this in with my Stampin' Blends. So I'm gonna take some Petal Pink, as well as, I'm actually gonna use Old Olive instead of the Mossy Meadow. It, they're just, Mossy Meadow is so dark. So um, I might bring in the light Mossy Meadow to add a little accent to this, but otherwise I'll use the Old Olive. It's just a little bit more <laughs> in tune with things. All right, now dogwoods, I don't even really know what color they're supposed to be. I think they're supposed to be really light in color. That's what I'm going with. Um, but some other colors that would look really pretty with this are like Fresh Freesia or Highland Heather Bubble Bath. Um, you could even do Pool Party or Balmy Blue, or in my case, I'm going to do Petal Pink. So it's kind of up to you. Now, what I like to do on this image, because it is kind of detailed, is I'm going to go over, mo you know, like the big areas with my um, light petal pink. And then we're going to come back in and add some details. And I'm noticing my petal pink marker here is about to die. So let's try the other side. Hopefully that'll work. Yep, this is working just fine. This is one case where I usually have the other um, side wears out faster than the, usually the bullet side wears out faster for me, but in this case, the brush did. Okay, so I'm just kind of not very carefully going over the whole petal in my light petal pink. Like I said, this is usually the opposite way that from what I typically do, because we're going to come back in and add the highlights or the shading, I should say, with my dark marker. Just wanna make sure I got everything. Okay. So then I'm gonna take my dark marker and I like using the bullet end always. And then where I see the more shading lines, that's where I'm gonna add more color, the darker color. So wherever there's more black lines is where I'm going to add more of the dark petal pink color. So there's not, not a lot of specialty coloring knowledge required for this one. Where the stamp lines are dark, you put more color and where they're open, don't put color or don't add more color. So pretty simple. We've got the little bud here. Oh, 
Oh, this is just so pretty. I feel like dogwoods are um, a more southern thing. I'm not sure. My my vast knowledge of plants, which is uh, me being silly because I don't have a vast knowledge of plants at all. I can barely keep a house plant. Like one of those spider plants is supposed to basically stay alive through a nuclear apoc apocalypse. Yeah, I can barely keep that alive. <laughs> Anyway, there is my coloring so far. It's real light, so you might not see it super well um, on camera. We're going to repeat basically that same process again, this time with our leaves. So like I said, I'm going to use old olive. And then we'll come back in and add uh, the dark shading. So this is light old olive and we'll come back in with some dark or maybe even some um, mossy meadow light. I'm going to just over here squiggle that so I can kind of test it out on my scrap here before I start coloring on my image. Now this set does not have dyes that go with it which, you know, that's not the end of the world. Um, we're gonna fussy cut this out because it's just worth it. <laughs> but you could also, um, the reason we're doing it is because the panel we're gonna attach it on is gonna be a little smaller than this image and I like the look of it sticking out. But if you didn't want to, you could just increase the size of the panel in the next step after we finish coloring all this. You'll see. Okay, so now I've got either dark, that's old olive, um, or I can take light mossy meadow. They're really similar. I actually think I'm going to stick with the old olive. Um, but you can see, I actually think the old olive almost looks more like the mossy meadow cardstock. The mossy meadow I don't know. This is a warmer color that seems to work with that better, but that's just my opinion. Doesn't matter. It's not actually the end of the world either way. Okay, so just like the flowers where I see more lines um, is where I'm going to color darker or color with a dark marker. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more careful because this is a much darker color than, say, that petal pink going to stick pretty close to what I'm seeing in the shading of the stamp lines. But I love that everything's in the stamp because you don't have to know what to do. You just follow the lines. They'll guide you through like a beacon. <laughs> I'm being silly, of course, but they are helpful. I learned a lot about coloring by following um, the lines in stamped images. I always said that a reason I stamp is because I'm not very good at drawing and that way I can still make pretty things with very little skill. <laughs> so I always liked that about stamping is that it, you didn't really have to have any kind of artistic skill to be able to make pretty stuff. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to take a little bit of some cinnamon or pecan pie. <laughs> I don't know why I said cinnamon. That's funny. Uh, that's my dark. I want my light. I think I'll just go through it with a light um, for this branch because it is kind of, you know, a little branchier than green. Like, or woodier, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so there we go. Very simple. Now, here's like, this is like the, the question, and maybe you guys can help me. What do we color the centers of these flowers with? What color should they be? Like, should they be like bright green? Or should they be like brown? Or should we? I don't know.
Oh, I'm reading all these comments about where you live and if you have dogwoods. Are there dogwoods? Deb is on here. Deb, are there dogwoods in Iowa? <laughs> Brown, yellow, yellow, gold. Um, brown, yellow. <laughs> I see. I see how it is. <gasps> wild wheat. Ooh, I love it. You know I'm a sucker for wild wheat. I think we might have to go with wild wheat. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's try some wild wheat here. Oh yeah, see that's kind of a yellowy golden color. And then of course, like any good person, we'll put some Winkastella on it because it makes everything better. Okay. So I'm going to put Winkastella on all of the flower parts. And then we'll fussy cut here for a sec. Okay, so I'll get my fussy cut and scissors. Ooh, lemon yellow, yeah. Ooh, someone said that looks perfect. Great! Thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> Okay, so whenever we cut out, we're going to leave a border just like a die would. And we'll just go round and round. Oh, so pretty. Now you can choose, do you wanna go all the way in here and then around, or do you wanna leave it connected? Be, let's just say the faster way, and then we just connect it and don't cut it all the way out. That's okay. No judgment. That's, you know, that is our motto here at the Creativity Cave, we don't judge. I think, um, I'm trying to remember, I think my husband said something weird the other day and I said, okay, we don't judge at the creativity cave, but maybe that. <laughs> hey, he was saying something to the girls when we were working last week. Which made me giggle. Okay. There we go. Did um, did you guys have uh, the day off of work? My husband worked, but my son didn't have school. And I kind of wish I didn't have work, but there's so much to be done this week. <laughs> I had to. I had to work. I keep thinking it's next week, which it's, oh, every time I realize it's not, it really makes me feel good. <sighs> Um, oh, I have to tell you guys, this is really funny. So I am not in, in need of a new car, but last night I dreamt that my husband wanted me to buy a new car and he wanted me to get a hot rod type car. And what did I call it? I called it a roadster when I was trying to tell him this during our morning walk with the dogs and he was laughing at me and I said, no, a hot rod. I said, like, the Tim the Toolman Taylor was rebuilding. <laughs> anyway, so he wanted me to buy a new hot rod, like a modern hot rod, but I did not like it. And it was only a two-seater. And I said, that's dumb. The dogs won't fit. Like, we can't get a car that the dogs won't fit in. Like, that's just dumb. And I remember being super mad at him. Like, why did you want me to buy this dumb card? Now, here's the funny part, is the test drive for this was brought to me at Carl's um, track practice. Now why that is, I don't know. I've never attended his track practice uh, other than like pick him up when it, he was younger and didn't have a car or license or whatever. And so the car, like literally the entire car dealership came to us at his track practice where 
I had to test drive this hot rod and I did not like the car and I was mad at him that he made the um, car dealership people come to Carl's track practice. And then I thought it, it was even more dumb because the car was so ridiculous. <laughs> And so I like woke up annoyed with my husband and then I realized the reason was because of this really stupid dream that I had, which made no sense. So anyway, <laughs> there it is. But now you have an insight into my weird dream. I've had a lot of weird dreams lately. I don't know why. So there you go. Okay. It's so pretty. Oh, I love it. All right. So now I've got, um, this piece, which you can see is going to go on this larger piece of vanilla, which is four by two and three quarters. Okay, so we're going to put that on top here with this. And then you can see how it sticks off on the sides. And I like that look. Then we're going to choose a sentiment for this. And I thought this was kind of a sympathy type of card. But I don't know, that doesn't quite fit right there. So maybe we're going to turn it into a thank you card. And it, gosh, it's going to be a pretty thank you card. Um, just because the sympathy doesn't quite fit in that spot the way I want it to. Um, oh, I guess we could turn it this way. That would be kind of fun. Maybe we should do it that way because I really do kind of have my heart set on this being a sympathy card. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to stamp this in, goodness, I still have a Berry Burst ink pad on my desk. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to stamp this in some uh, Mossy Meadow ink on here. You could also do Petal Pink. Or if you felt wild, wild and fancy free, you could stamp it in Wild Wheat. But I feel like um, Mossy Meadow is probably the best. <laughs> Okay, so um, then I'm going to pop this pin up. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. So I have, I have this, um, this big, huge tree in front of my house and I don't, it, it could be a dogwood. It comes with gorgeous whitish blooms in the early, early, early spring. And um, what makes me think it might be a dogwood is somebody made the comment that it always freezes and then they all the blooms fall off. That always happens. Um, anyway, it's really pretty. And then it's, but it's only really pretty for like a couple of weeks and then they all fall off and it's done. Or if that, actually, sometimes it's only a couple of days. It kind of just depends on the weather. Sometimes we get real strong winds and they all fall off that way. Kind of just depends. But <clears throat> the flowers on it are white with like yellow insides. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's a dogwood or not. But it's kind of a big tree. Okay, there we go. Oh, so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, Okay. Oh my gosh, Deborah, that is hysterical. A transformer. You're jealous of my fussy cutting. It's pretty easy. Just be patient. Oh, you retired people in your days off. Good for you. You enjoy those. Okay, so that's just lovely. Now I've got a panel for the inside. Good thing we didn't stamp that yet since we switched the orientation of this. <laughs> um, so for this, I think you could do a lot of different things. Um, I think actually what I'm going to do is this other br branchy image um, because it'll be real simple and quick to color. Okay, so I'll just stamp that right there and oh so pretty and then is there like a coordinating I feel like there's a coordinating sentiment with deepest sympathy 
No, not really. Probably shouldn't put the everyday magic on the inside of this card. <laughs> Don't think that would be received quite the same. Okay, so I'm going to do my light pecan pie. Now I have one, like, I'm sitting here thinking, did I say pumpkin pie when I first called this pecan pie in the last part? I don't know. But here we are. You know sometimes words are hard. Oh my gosh. If Joy, are you on here? Do you remember the pumpkin in the, what was it? Pumpkins? I called something a pumpkin and it was not a pumpkin. <laughs> what was that? I think it was supposed to be like a flamingo. I know that doesn't seem right. <laughs> I don't know. But I really messed up that. Um, this was years ago, like six or eight years ago, probably in a video, one of my first videos. Or maybe I call, what was it? Pineapple? No. Was it? It was a pineapple and I called it a pumpkin. Okay. I remember thinking that the word it was supposed to be was like more tropical. There was a tropical word involved somehow. <laughs> I have a weird memory, don't I? Okay. So then we'll color this again. Now this is uh, pretty quick to color. I'm just going over the whole thing with light, my light petal pink. And I don't even really see the insides of this. These almost look like... Um, tulips to me but I know they're not but they kind of have that look about them it's just so pretty okay there we go all right and let's put that on the inside and then let's embellish it's just is so pretty. All right, so I'm going to grab my pearls and I'm going to take and put scatter scatter some pearls around. They're just so gorgeous like that and maybe even stick one. So pretty. Okay, so that's our second card. Now our third card is kind of a collage stamping card. It's really, um, it's a really pretty card and you can do this um, with a lot of different colors as well as what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with a base color of Pebbled Path. which I'm giggling because I was writing out the dimensions for this and I kept calling this gray granite. And I'm like, no, no, this is Pebbled Path because the other piece in here is gray granite, like this. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have, um, we've got a, a bunch of pieces here. So I'm gonna start with this piece, which is, let's see. Oh, uh, a layer of four by five and a quarter, sorry, for the outside. <laughs> and then I've got, a, I think, two and three quarters by four inch piece. This is um, designer series paper from, uh, ooh, what is that suite called? Nature's Suite? No, that's not right. Nature's Sweetness. Oh, that is right. <laughs> Look at me saying the right name. Good job, Dina. Way to go. Okay, so I'm going to just put this piece on here. It seems wrong to cover up that gorgeous gold paper, but we're going to do it. Um, then I've got a half of an inch strip of Berry Burst. And, um, you know, Berry Burst is one of those colors I just love. I don't, I, I mean, it. I don't want to cheat on my very favorite color with Berry Burst, but I feel like... It's a close second. So I'm just running my bone folder over this back and forth in all directions. And you can see the paper is literally starting to separate and I'll just finish the job. And then what I have is this really cool textured piece 
the inside portion and we're going to throw that on here kind of on that border between our cardstock and the designer series paper and oh it's just so pretty okay so i've just added that on here it's just a little hanging off that bugs me so i'm going to cut just trim it There we go. So this I will attach to my card base. Now you might be wondering, or actually you probably aren't wondering this, but when I was designing this for today's card, I, um, I could have gone with a four and a quarter inch piece and just put it directly on the card base, but I didn't because if this is four inches, you can get more out of a sheet of uh, designer series paper, which I'm always thinking about that. I always want this to really fit. So um, this four inches width will give me more out of a, out of a, a piece of my 12 by 12 cardstock. So that's how that came about. All right, next up. And then I always think it's nice to put that extra layer on. That's just me. Okay, then I've got a three by four and three quarters inch piece of gray granite. And gray granite, of course, goes so nicely with pebbled path. And then we're going to layer that on a piece of uh, three and an eighth by four and seven eighths berry burst. Um, but, but before we do that, we're going to stamp on this. And here's where we're going to have some fun with collage stamping. Now i got to start with my stamps all nice and clean so I got all my chamois are dirty <laughs> they're in the in the bathroom sink waiting for me to clean them which just kind of makes me giggle um oops Let's just clean all our stamps here real quick so we're going to create just a little collaged background on here okay I think I got it all clean now and uh, I'm going to start with this stamp, which is actually my biggest stamp. We're going to stamp gray granite on here. And so I'll stamp that like that. And then actually I'm going to stamp it once again, but I'm not going to re-ink it. And I'm going to kind of drop it a little lower so we get different um, shades. Then I'm going to do polka dots. We're going to kind of go much of the way across the bottom. All right, then I'm going to take, where's my little, this one. This is the one I didn't clean but needed to. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of this and um, kind of stamp some right there. And then I'm going to stamp off a layer of this ink. I like the evenness I get by stamping it off on cardstock or on just like a scrap of paper versus on my, um, my little glass mat. It's just not quite even enough, but you can see that's a nice light color. And then there's this little ampersand symbol which is kind of cool we'll just put that right over that um and we'll probably stamp this again maybe down here it's just with the ink that's left then I've got this beautiful um dragonfly which I think I inked up in another color so let's just clean that off and we'll stick that kind of out here um do another little ampersand here. Just want to make sure it's oriented correctly. Um, anything else? Okay. Now I've got a scrap of um, gray granite that I'm going to use. I'm going to take some berry burst and I'm going to stamp my dogwood flower. Again, this one coordinates with our punch, so I'll punch that out here in a moment. 
um, I'm going to take this little label and where's my punch? I like looking at the punch so I can stamp it in the right place because it'll punch out easier if I punch, if I stamp it right here than if I stamped it up there. Um, like this. Okay. And then we'll take our petal punch. And this will go right here. Oh, that's not oriented quite right. I should have looked at that ahead of time. But I'm just going to trim this off so I can kind of stick this in. There we go. Like so. Then there's that. And then I'm going to take this little piece. This is a little vine. And I'm going to stamp that like so. Then I'm going to get a little crazy. I'm going to take um, that little or ornamental design. I'm going to stamp that on here a couple times. So I get a stamped off version, basically. And then um, I'm going to take whatever ink is left on here. And just kind of go through it and then maybe that little I'm just adding a little bit of extra in the background now I'm gonna actually punch this with the leaf now I didn't need all the other flowers that I ended up getting this is all I wanted but isn't that kind of fun it's just a little different and it's gonna add another little pop of color to our card. Okay, I think I have everything. Actually, I want to stamp these um, these leaves on here a couple more times just to sort of fill in. And I'm just kind of using whatever ink is left on the stamp. You know, I'm not inking it up again because um, I don't want it to be too dark. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, one more little detail that we can do. Uh, I just need to find. The right brush, I think this will work. Is I'm just going to very lightly um, ink blend along the corner, just the corner, not the whole piece. Just add a little bit of color. There's not much here, just a little bit of color. Kind of gives it that burnished look. Okay, now let's take all of these pieces and create our card because you guys are you guys are gonna be like, what? It's so pretty. Alright, so this attaches to this. And then we're gonna pop that up on our card. Oh, so pretty. And then we're going to add all those little pieces. I don't know where my dimensionals went, so we'll just grab a new sheet. <laughs> That's kind of how I roll. I also think I have some ink on here, so let's just get rid of that just for safety's sake. Okay, there we go. Then um, we've got this little flower and this little leaf. Oh, and then this one. We gotta we gotta fussy cut this real quick. And I know you guys are just like, what? What is with the fussy cutting? Well, there's no dies for this. But let's let's do the tips again. So I'm gonna hold my snips kind of in one place, and I'm gonna move my cardstock in my other hand. I'm going to leave a border around all of the stuff that I cut out because that will hide any of my imperfections in cutting. And then you can go kind of in as deep as you want on the in between these petals or leaves. So whatever you're comfortable with. But notice 
my snips are really, I open them wide and then I just cut down, down, down and I leave the snips in place and my hand, my left hand is moving the paper around. So it's not my snips moving, it's my paper. Okay, and then I'll just go in. And then like if that piece is in your way, just cut it off. Around, 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 around. Do, 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 do. And There we go. Okay, so cute. All right, so that's going to go kind of up there. And then we're going to tuck this in. It's just like a fun little collage. And then this, I think this leaf is like my favorite element. Because it's just kind of a little, a little leaf that we're going to just tuck in there. Okay, then with the rest of this, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. Now you could stamp this in either your pebbled path ink or yeah or gray granite ink I can't seem to intertwine those words for some reason or your berry burst I'm gonna go with berry burst just cuz why not berry burst is so awesome okay so I'm inking that up and I'm using happy birthday again from our something fancy stamp set the one we've been using for all these There we go. And then I'm going to give that a quick trim out of my cardstock. So I'm going to trim a little off the top. And then it's going to be pretty skinny. Okay, and then. I'll punch this with my pick a punch. You can see I kind of got rid of the excess so it wasn't a super long tail hanging off there. But that looks good. You want to leave a little room so it can kind of tuck under. Okay. So then let's put all of this together. So I'm going to pop up my sentiment. So once again, good use of our oops, edge pieces. So you can get kind of one, one long skinny strip to fit under this. This is, I would say, three eighths of an inch if you wanted a real specific size. Let me scooch this over a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna pop this flower up. And it's going to overlap and of course I'm going to wiggle a little because I can't help myself it just looks so cool I'm just positioning this on here so I can read my sentiment and then I'm going to tuck my little elements in using glue dots because it's just easy okay so we'll Kind of tuck that in and then we'll add this and I love this little ticket or label or whatever you want to call it it's just kind of cute and then of course this oh shoot I knew I was gonna do this we're just gonna carefully remove these things because I also wanted to add a little bow with my Baker's twine now, don't forget, you can get a card kit for all these projects with all these little pieces um, by shopping in my online store. You've got two weeks for this one, and you can get this just with a $35 order. So really a good deal. It comes with all of the pieces embossed or cut, 
as well, not fussy cut, but you know what I mean. Uh, you have to, you have to do the stamping. Um, but it's such a great way to make cards, um, quick and easy. Cause I've done all the hard work for you. Everything's measured and all that good stuff. You just add the stamps. And even if you don't have this stamp set, you can certainly substitute for other things, or you can order so that you get the stamp set for free. Okay. So I just tied, tuck, tucked a little bow in here with my glue dot. And then I'm tucking the other elements back in that I had once upon a time. And, oh, isn't that pretty? I love this one so much. And then we're going to embellish with our pearls. And then we're going to do a layer on the inside, too. I was going to say, we didn't do that yet, did we? No. Okay, where's my take your pick tool? You can see, this is the point at which the video where everything is messy and I can't find anything. So we know we've done a good job today. Seriously, where did my take your pick tool go? This is the biggest struggle of stamping, is where is the take your pick tool? <laughs> I have like... Three of them, too. Well, for heaven's sakes. Here we go. When in doubt, just grab another one. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Okay. So I'm going to... Of course, put one here in the center. Oops. Oh, so bored, cute, bored, gorgeous. Then I'll just add a few more and look at how pretty that is. Oh, okay. Last but not least, we need our panel for the inside of our card. And we can kind of similarly um, add some um, of the same elements in the inside portion as well. So we'll just add those things, some stamped full strength, some stamped off, just to really add a nice little touch. So, oh, so pretty. Okay, and then what else am I looking for? I love this little ticket for some reason. It's just so cool. This is what I'm looking for. Okay, and then I will put my um, very burst flower in here because a pop of color will just make everything prettier. Of course, I can't find my very burst ink pad because apparently it has gone in the door to Narnia where my take your pick tool is. Oh, I put it back on my shelf. That was just crazy. So we'll just add that in there. And then we could even add this little peek. thinking this is pretty good. I feel like if I add too much, it will be bad. So let's stop there. And then we shall attach this to the inside of my card. And I'm a little worried this is too big because I think this might be a full quarter sheet. Oh, no, it's not. It's good. I need to refill my supply of four by five and a quarter white panels in my drawer. So there we go. Isn't this just stunning? Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. I'm closing up my ink pads. I'm going to bring in the other cards that I made today. And again, remind you shamelessly 
to shop my online store. I'd be so grateful for your business. And of course, would love to reward you with a lovely card kit featuring these three beautiful cards, if I can just say. So pretty um, and so easy. Obviously, the hardest part of both of these cards was fussy cutting these two things, but everything else was so simple. So we will send you a card kit with all the goodies that you need to make these beautiful cards. Um, when you spend $35, when you spend $50, you get a free celebration choice from Stampin' Up!, when you spend $75, I'll also send you the pearls. Um, and then if you spend $100, you can get the stamp set we used in these projects for free. So lots of, lots and lots and lots of perks. And of course, if you spend $100, you get all the other stuff too. So um, anyway, thank you all so much for stamping with me today. I hope you had the best time. Again, you've got through Feb or March 3rd to get this card kit. So you've got two weeks um, for this one. I will be back next Monday with some fun cards for you. Actually, I already know what I'm doing and it's going to be great. Um, and I can't wait to have you join us. So thank you guys so much for stamping with me today and I will see you soon. Bye.